Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Linus Dunkers. Uh, I have been working with uh, Bitcoin in different ways for about two years now. Uh, about one year ago I, I quit my job. Uh, since that time I've been working full-time uh, only with uh, Bitcoin related uh, technologies or mining and trading and so so forth. So how did you first get into Bitcoin? What was the initial point of contact? Yeah, the, the initial point of contact was actually a friend of mine who wanted to invest uh, and that was, could it be about two and a half or three years ago? Uh, at that time it was Mt. Gox. Uh, we will know what happened to them later on, but uh, uh, I assisted him to create an account with Mt. Gox and, and, and to buy his first Bitcoins. At that time I was not in the situation to, to invest any money or anything, but I started following what, what happened. And I followed uh, the exchange rate uh, throughout the, the time uh, it went from uh, from a few dollar up to or a few hundred dollar up to a thousand dollar and then when it crashed down after the Mt. Gox uh, crash. So, um, that was my initial contact with Bitcoin, but it was not until maybe half a year later that I, I started to get involved my, myself personally. Okay, and how did you how did you get involved? What was your first project? Well, the first, uh, first time I invested personally in, in, in Bitcoin was actually after the crash. So after the Mt. Gox system crashed, uh, or they were um, robbed of a lot of their, their Bitcoins, uh, there was actually another site that what was established where you could buy and sell Bitcoins or exchange Bitcoins from within Mt. Gox and on the outside world. So there was like a ratio between the Mt. Gox coins and the real coins, so to speak. And that's where I started buying my first Bitcoin. So my first Bitcoin was actually locked by Mt. Gox. Oh. Because I bought them from another Mt. Gox user uh, that already had the coins inside Mt. Gox. So my first coin is still uh, missing. <laughs> still inside a Mt. Gox uh, uh, system somewhere or, or if one of the coins that was stolen maybe, I don't know. But from there on I, I started uh, investing in, in bitcoins and sometimes speculating in, in other altcoins. Um, I would say I've been fairly unlucky in my my um, investments. <laughs> I've invested maybe in 10 different companies that all uh, turned out to be either scams, uh, they went bankrupt or, or simply uh, the coin is not worth anything more. Uh, both when it comes to, to different coins and hardware. I bought hardware uh, for, for mining from uh, many companies that nowadays uh, they are bankrupt or they are in legal, uh, have legal problems or whatever. So uh, most of the equipment I bought I never received anything but uh, you learn by doing <laughs> and I've done a lot of uh, bad investments so now I know uh, nowadays to be more careful about where to invest uh, money or bitcoins. What current projects are you involved in? Well, um, I started off doing uh, trading, private trading uh, on local bitcoins, uh, and, and I'm still doing it, uh, private trading on, on local bitcoins. Uh, I thought I would take it to the next level, making a company. I registered my, my, uh, my company, BTC Sweden. Uh, I, I filed for uh, the right to to buy and sell uh, Bitcoin as a company from Finansinspektionen, so I got the permission, uh, or at least I'm registered uh, to do so. Um, but then there was the problem of Swedish banks, <laughs> as many of us uh, entrepreneurs or or early adopters in in Bitcoin have realized is that the banks is is not. They are very hostile against everything that has to do with Bitcoin. Um, so um, somewhere there, my, my ideas of uh, of 
running it as a company instead of doing private trading, it stopped because th there was no possibility uh, of of, uh, of doing that. Uh, I, I um, even got a article in the uh, Swedish magazine New Technique, New Technology or something, uh, where they were writing about this that that there is no Swedish bank who who is willing to to provide bank idea. Uh, uh, electronic legitimation or uh -huh. um, and and uh, because of that I can't uh, I can't follow the regulations uh, when it comes to to buying and selling uh, Bitcoin so I, I never actually succeeded to go go through with that company it's still there uh, that's the company I'm today doing my mining instead uh, in that uh, company but Trading is still uh, I have to do privately because the banks are are not uh, cooperative uh, or cooperating when it comes to to Bitcoin companies. Uh, I even had an application uh, developed by by uh, some guys uh, outsourced uh, development to I think it was Russia somewhere or somewhere. Um, they made an application for for Android uh, based on a mycelium wallet. So it was possible to to buy and sell directly from the application, and uh, the idea was that you could buy and sell directly from the application and get the bitcoins inside your wallet straight away instead of having to use different sources. Like today, you go to local bitcoins and buy bitcoins, or Safello or BTCX or whatever, and then you transfer it to another wallet where you you maybe do purchase or. Um, whatever you want to do with your Bitcoin. My idea was to have a one uh, wallet that can do it all, where you get directly from the wallet, you, you go to your Swish app, you pay money, you get Bitcoin straight into the app. But uh, once again, uh, the, this project and this company was uh, put on hold because of uh, there was no bank willing to cooperate uh, with, with these uh, ideas. So once again, the banks have let you down. How are the other exchanges in Sweden getting around this? Um, that's interesting. Um, there is one Swedish bank that operates uh, slightly different from the other ones, and that is Handelsbanken. Because Handelsbanken, they, they, that is a one, much more, uh, what can you say, flat organization where each office or bank office, they can take their own decisions in, in uh, various questions. And for example, to bring in a customer uh, dealing with Bitcoin, it's up to the individual bank office to decide. So I've uh, reached out to three or four of them, of these offices, and asked if, if my company can, can have a bank a bank id for company uh, through them but but uh, all of them had said, turned turned me down and the company um, i want the companies that are already existing in sweden that already is doing this business to continue running their business that's why i haven't made um, that's why i haven't brought this up much because uh, i don't want to cause any trouble to the ones who have actually already have a cooperation with handelsbanken uh, but the situation right now is that uh, you need to have an, an, an insider you need to have someone uh, well connected within uh, handelsbanken any other bank i i don't see it possible because uh, they are they are controlled from up so they have a clear um, signal from from top uh, to not accept any Bitcoin related, at least not exchange related uh, companies. Uh, the only way would be to find a Handelsbanken office where you have a contact that can help you get approved by that specific uh, office and then you're good to go. I haven't found that contact yet so that's why I'm still um, doing private trading and only doing mining in, in, in my company. Okay, and do you want to tell us a little bit more about the mining operation that you're um, overseeing? Yeah, sure, I, I can start by, by uh, talking about these investments I did in, in uh, some of the main mining hardware. Uh, that went 
bankrupt. It was mining ASIC technologies from Holland. Uh, it was flower technology from Canada and uh, KNC miner. So uh, I actually received one of the few mining ASIC technologies units for script mining. I've only invested in script mining. It's not the same as Bitcoin mining. Uh, so for Bitcoin mining, you need a certain units. I've I've been dealing with them as well, uh, like uh, ant miners and, and Terra miner, and uh, there are many. Uh, Bitcoin miners, but that's the that's the thing with Bitcoin mining. It's always new companies, always new machines. So if you want to stay profitable with, with Bitcoin mining, you have to change the hardware all the time. Maybe you can run it for a few months, then you have to sell it and buy new hardware because electricity um, ratio uh, is is uh, too bad for for old uh, old units. So there's no more. Uh, profitability after a few months you have to replace the hardware but for script mining uh, the hardware is more or less the same as it was one year ago it's uh, fewer companies who are are, are developing new hardware and uh, the interest of script mining is far less than than Bitcoin mining why is that then well everyone is aware of Bitcoin uh, some people also heard about there is another coin called Litecoin and Litecoin actually is one of the coins you can mine with, with the script miners but uh, I, I don't think many people are aware of that 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 there is uh, other types of mining um, in the early days you could use your, your CPU uh, your ordinary processor in computer then you turned into GPU rigs where you maybe had uh, like five or ten graphic cards in a big computer. Um, but nowadays the only way of, of doing script or Bitcoin mining is to use uh, special hardware, uh, ASIC machines. And, and um, they are not that common, not that easy to find when it comes to script. Much harder to find. Uh, than the Bitcoin miners. You can't even buy new script miners anywhere I know of. Only used ones like eBay and Tradera and Blocket and so on, if you're lucky. So that's why I stay with, with script mining hardware because I can I can remain with the same hardware for a long time. I don't have to replace it all the time and uh, uh, yeah, it's it has worked fine for me so far. Uh, we'll see how long I can continue doing mining. But uh, I'd be interested to come and see your your setup. Yeah, uh, it's somehow hidden or oh. securely put somewhere. Are you aware of others in Sweden doing the same sort of operation? Uh, within script mining, I, I'm not aware of anyone having the same amount of resources. Maybe. I know people running script miners, uh, but usually they have a, a few of them, maybe um, the most famous script miner or the most uh, profitable script miner is, is KNC miner actually, the Titan. And uh, most people I, I know of that has done script mining had maybe one, two or three uh, miners, but I haven't heard about any other script mining facility that has a larger quantity of of hashing power. What is your feeling on the up, up and coming um, halving? The this halving June? of Bitcoin. It feels like it was not that long ago. Uh, last halving was but uh, um, at that time of course the, the immediate days after there's a big difference, of course. You you get only half the profit of uh, uh, for each found block. Uh, so so that makes nobody knows now what will happen. But probably the price will will increase somehow. But uh, mostly many people will stop mining because they uh, uh, they don't have the profitability with the hardware they have. Like I said, Bitcoin miners, they are they have to be replaced very often uh, because of electricity cost becomes higher than the profitability uh, so so uh, you actually you will probably lose money 
if you have an old miner once the halving uh, occurs. So you would think a lot of the companies involved now are already transitioning their equipment? They, they must have already started doing that. And if so not, they will probably go bankrupt because oh. uh, once the, uh, the profitability is already now very low. Uh, I bought many Neptunes like uh, maybe a year ago. I never connected them, I never run them, uh, unfortunately, because I didn't have uh, enough power at that time to, to run all of them. So I bought them for maybe 10, 15 thousand each. And now, now uh, it's worth maybe 2,000 or something. So it was a total loss. Uh, because they don't generate any profit. If you don't, if you have to pay for electricity, you 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 have to have uh, units that are made within the last uh, couple of months or half a year back. Then you might have a uh, profitability another few months or half a year. Uh, any unit older than that, you you can just use for for heating up your your apartment or mm -hmm. house. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it's it's uh, just a. Oh no, just. While we're on mining, the topic of mining, you would be aware of this company Twenty One. This idea of desktop mining, the, the yeah. mini mining. What What's your um, impressions of what they're what they're working on there? Well, actually, I, I haven't followed them very closely. I, I I know they have some hardware development going on, and they also have some uh, services. I think they made some announcement of some. Uh, was it Ping 21 or something uh, like a uh, like a service to to keep uh, to keep track of servers and, and computers if they are online? Uh, there is a lot a lot of uh, other implementations, but the idea is uh, it's like a proof of concept. If I remember, it's a proof of concept of how you can offer such services based on uh, Bitcoin payments. So. Um, um, they are doing some interesting things, but I'm I'm not uh, that uh, involved or or uh, I don't know that much about uh, what they are do actually doing. Mm -hmm. Many of these companies who have received uh, enormous amounts of of crowdfunding or or, or uh, money from different sources, I th I don't think anyone knows ex exactly what they are doing except from themselves. And probably a few of them will show up later on to be scams. But I think 21 and Circle and a few others, they, they I think they are trying to do something uh, positive for the Bitcoin community in the end. Which services are standing out for you at the moment? Which ones are getting you, which ones are you excited about? I, actually, I, I don't think I've seen the ones yet that, that, that like, it blows my mind <laughs> that, that, uh, um, there is a lot of potential. I ha hear a lot of ideas about what you could do and so on. But uh, the services you find so far, they are not that... Uh, no, it's nothing I, I, I've seen so far that really blows my mind. Uh, most of the services are, are uh, uh, about exchanges, mining pools and uh, uh, different ways of using Bitcoin instead of other currencies like on a casino or like... Uh, you can buy things like from merchants and and, and uh, use Bitcoin for payment and uh, all those services are part of uh, the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem. What can you say? Uh, to 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 be able to 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 have a purpose of Bitcoin, you you have to have those services. But none of them are are really unique or or taking that much advantage of the blockchain. Uh, but there, there will be, I think, a lot of more interesting companies doing things that wasn't possible earlier. I've heard many people talking about the uh, taxi car that could uh, run of itself and, and uh, fuel up whenever it has to go uh, get more petrol, or that can go to to service when it has to without anyone uh, controlling it. Such. Uh, such ideas are really cool, but all of them are in the future. Um, but uh, I, I think uh, we'll have to wait a bit more to see the really um, cool implementations of blockchain and Bitcoin.
so far it's mostly the, the kind of services you, you, you could expect. You can change from one to another, you can uh, transfer, you can buy things, you can... but nothing really. So what about competitors to Bitcoin? I'll take, you know, altcoins, other, other blockchains, platforms. What, what is your... where is your attention being drawn? If it was being drawn away from <laughs> Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, there there have always been a lot of discussions about altcoins, if they are good or bad, and and so on. And what I can agree is that an altcoin that doesn't do anything new and conflicts with the algorithm of Bitcoin, that is SHA-256, uh, that is, I don't see a point of it, because you are just taking away hashing power from the real blockchain, that is the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, the, the power of Bitcoin and the blockchain of, of Bitcoin is is simply the, the mining power uh, because that's what makes no company or, or state or whatever able to to destroy or hack or, or uh, prevent transactions and so on. Uh, that's the strength of Bitcoin, that you have a lot of hashing power. So making another coin based on the same algorithm that doesn't provide any new mechanism, uh, that's I, I think is a waste of uh, hashing power. But on the other hand you have other algorithms, like script for example. So that's why I see Litecoin is not really competing uh, with, with uh, Bitcoin with the same hashing power. So, so that's why I can see there is a uh, it could be a good idea to have currencies based on other algorithms, like for example Litecoin. Uh, you can also have other altcoins that offer new services, like for example uh, Ethereum, that is basically not really a currency, not mainly, but, but uh, it, it works somehow like an uh, like altcoin as well. Uh, because Ethereum adds uh, another layer or, or another functionality that you can't offer with, with Bitcoin blockchain and transactions. So um, I see reason to develop new altcoins that can offer new services or uh, that could be based on, on new algorithms. But uh, nowadays you have like uh, 800 or something uh, different altcoins in total. And many of them are, are based on the same algorithm, they don't offer any new services, and I think they will sooner or later uh, fade away and, and die. Uh, because there is, uh, w once people realize that there is no use of them, uh, they, will, they will go away. You have to offer something new if you want to make altcoin. And something probably that can't be done on an existing coin. Uh, so not only that it has to be new, it has to be um, so new and so revolutionized that, that it can't be done on top of the blockchain and that's not much uh, that leaves out most of the current existing co coins mm -hmm. so uh, I'm focusing on on Bitcoin mainly and I'm very interested in, in seeing what will happen with uh, Ethereum uh, I hope also Litecoin will continue to be strong since since my mining power is is uh, focused on script mining. Um, but uh, other than that, I I don't uh, follow that much uh, other altcoins. Within the Bitcoin community, obviously, there's been a bit of division over the past uh, few months. Do you want to comment on where you stand or amongst yeah. amongst those divisions? Uh, n no, I don't really have an opinion uh, about that. I, I, I think it will be fine either way, because let let's say Bitcoin was um, somehow forced to have the same block size, so it wasn't even a possibility to change the block size. Then I think we would find solutions to that. Um, there is already solutions when it comes to, for example, microtransactions. Um, and there will be many more solutions to, to the problems uh, uh, that, that are related to the, the block size. Uh, 
So even if the block size would not increase, I think we would find other solutions to those problems that might occur. Uh, if the block size does increase, um, then that's fine as well, I think. Uh, I think the community is so big around Bitcoin, uh, if you include all people around the world that that, uh, that are much more knowledgeable than me about the coding and the programming and the, the code behind Bitcoin. So I, I feel confident that whatever happens, um, we will be able to find solutions to the problems. I'm not worried about th those uh, those things actually. So you have no worries of, uh, around <laughs> the future? I mean, what about cent centralized mining? Um, well, that's not really a new problem. Uh, I remember the time I did Bitcoin mining, I was at uh, CXIO or Gihash IO. And actually, uh, during a short time, they had more than 50, they had around 51% or 50% uh, at one time. <sighs> what you can do if you have a majority of the hashing power is, is more or less just to, um, to uh, reject some transactions. You can delay or, or, or even if you delay it for eternity, you can, you can reject some transactions but you can't really do much more than that um, possibly also double spending but, but um, no it's it's too complicated and and the uh, I think it has been blown up a bit too much about the the 51% uh, problem uh, with, with mining um, I don't think that will be an issue. Uh, it could be a bit with the smaller coins, though. The altcoins are are more. Um, they can be damaged by by, for example, adding a, a lot of hashing power for a very small coin. We have seen this happening uh, a few times when you have the multiples, where where the most profitable coin is where all the hashing power goes there. Uh, temporarily and then when the difficulty rises it goes somewhere else and it jumps around like that and what has happened a few times is that uh, if you have a lot of hashing power on one of those mul multiples and all the hashing power goes into a very small coin the difficulty is put so high that once they move away from there no one ever finds the next block because the difficulty is so high so so uh, those miners that remain with that small coin, they will never find the next block. Uh, but even for those kind of problems, there is initiatives to uh, to spend a bit of the hashing power just to release such blockchains. So blockchains that have been like locked or frozen because the difficulties went too high. Um, there is people. Uh, one, I'm one of them. Uh, that that tries to solve such situations by by bringing the difficulty back, finding the next block and bringing the difficulty back to a normal uh, level. So it's a strong community behind most of the altcoins and mostly Bitcoin. So whatever problems you foresee, it's usually there is good people <laughs> willing to to do something about it. So that well, that's the questions I've got here. But is there anything you would like to touch on that I missed? Um, of course, we may catch up again in the future. But uh, perhaps there's something I you want to so. comment on. Uh, no, not more than uh, I mean I, I mentioned about my company, and and it was not a very uh, it was not a success story because of the banks, as I mentioned. But what I do have and that I appreciate very much is uh, all the contacts I have received from trading and mining uh, through Skype and email and, and, and local bitcoins and so on uh, many of them I, I I work very closely with nowadays and they are doing very interesting projects both within uh, mining uh, pools and, and exchanges and so on uh, and we are um, we are like a team on Skype that are communicating often about 
what we can do and how we can do uh, new services, offer new services. Um, but until that is in place, uh, some of these ideas, um, I, I can't go much deeper into it, but, uh, but more than, than saying that I, I think uh, half a year from now, uh, my, I, my goal is uh, to have a lot more activities running under my business name of BTC Sweden, a lot more than just uh, mining. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. I'll look forward to it seeing what you come up with. Um, okay, Linus, Duncan, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.